On today's Question of Faith, can I buy products from companies that don't uphold Catholic teaching? Hey everybody, this is Question of Faith. I am Mike Hayes. I'm the director of Young Adult Ministry here in the Diocese of Cleveland. And I'm Father Damien Ferentz, the Vicar for Evangelization. And I'm Maria Wankata with the Marriage and Family Ministry Office. Hey, wait, what? You're with, with who? Yeah, I'm making a little some, change. Some news. Uh-oh, coming Tell down our floor. Tell us about it, Maria. Yeah, so uh, I am moving from communications into the Parish Life Office, working with Woo-hoo. Terry Yeoman and Marriage and Family Ministry. It's going to be awesome to have you. We're neighbors, so she's moving down one floor, essentially, yep. is mm-hmm. what we're Big talking move. about. <laughs> and you're still involved in communications because you're doing this podcast, and you'll be communicating a lot, so it's great. Yep, very there excited. You go. Mm-hmm. All right, well... We were talking a little bit about, you know, what can we buy and, what can, you know, what, can we support Catholic companies? Um, can we support companies, I should say, that don't support Catholic teaching? So what do we think? What do we find in uh, our little research this week? Yeah, I, I think a few distinctions are in order. It all uh, – part of it depends on the intent of what you're doing. So there are many, many companies who do not support um, what we would consider good Catholic policy – And uh, so one ought to consider those sorts of things, but it's hard to find a company that's all in with Catholic things, right? So I'm thinking of a couple examples. So one would be uh, back in the day, there used to be a a little shop in Parma, and it was all over Greater Cleveland, called Lawson's. And Lawson's was like a dairy deli or convenience store. And all the churches in Parma decided that we were going to boycott Lawson's because they sold pornography, like Playboys and penthouses and magazines like this. So all the churches got in, and guess what Lawson's stopped doing? Selling porn. And they did that for probably 10 years, and then Mm -hmm. they started up again. They kind of snuck it back in because, I don't know, they thought it was good for business or something. But it's effective for Catholics to boycott and protest from time to time. But the question is, can we... Can we support companies that are not all in with uh, Catholic teaching? And it would seem to me that as long as you are not supporting those policies, um, that it would be permissible to do so. And that would be called what um, remote cooperation within, with, with evil somehow. But it's not formal, right. implicit cooperation with, with something. Is that what, was that what the person had in mind? Is this your question, Maria? Or, yeah, no. Okay. So somebody, somebody from, the, from the, uh, the fest gave us this question. Okay. And, I, yeah, that was what they had in mind. Okay. So and what are, you, what are your thoughts, Mike? Um, yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm the same. Like, if you, if you were saying, hey, I'm going to support this company because they support abortion, mm-hmm. let's say, that would be formal. That would be on, right mm-hmm. on the nose. But if you're saying, well, you know, I, I'm going to support this company because – they do these things that are, you know, within our Catholic teaching, then you're, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's a little more on the mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's like, you know, like, you know, all of our Apple products, you know, like, what do they support? You know, they mm-hmm. support all kinds of things. Do we, you know, can can we buy an iPhone? Can we do, you know, it, it's hard, right? You know, yeah. it's hard to think about it. Yeah, I think with just the way our economy and how we buy things now, there's, no way to to live prudently or even within your means by even not using, like Amazon, for example. Um, but with Amazon, you can always, um, with through Amazon Smile, pick a, a parish or a nonprofit mm-hmm. or something that you want a percentage of your money to go to. So even as you research companies, how you're going to buy, what you're going to buy, how often you're going to buy, is um, even if you can't you don't support everything that they fully out there communicate, um, there's ways around it and being as discerning and forming your conscious as much as possible, too, and how you're choosing, how you're going about. Yeah, I use Amazon Smile myself. You're welcome, Catholic Charities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I'm a loser. This is the first time I'm hearing about Amazon Smile. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you could just – you basically can – give a portion of the funds will go to a charity, right? Yeah. 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 I think I got my little statement a couple weeks ago that, you know, hundred some dollars is going to my parish because honestly, I have to use Amazon a lot. It adds up. It comes off what you buy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. Like I, and I, I got a statement at the end of the year that I gave, I gave to the Paul's fathers and 
at, you know at one point and they it, it adds up like mm-hmm. I, I i came back it was like it was like a thousand bucks yeah i mean mm-hmm. you know cause I, I do a lot of amazon shopping i do all my christmas shopping on amazon you know all those kinds of things yeah and mm-hmm. this kind of like so for many years i worked with local businesses so even um an example was I worked with a lot of florists mm. and there's 1-800-PRO-Flowers, like all these kind of aggregate florist sites. Mm-hmm. Um, but they take so much money off the top that it's better if you can find and go directly to the florist yes. than, than going online. So thinking of ways that you can support a local business right. directly where you know the, the owners instead of, you know, some of these aggregate sites that, you know, aren't treating the local business fairly. Yeah. So thinking of ways around that too. Yeah, basically middle people, right? You know, mm-hmm. and they're taking a cut of the of the money that that local florist could be getting because all they do is they call a local florist and say, hey, I got this order. Can you fulfill it? Yeah, mm-hmm. and you'll get a better product too right. mm-hmm. in service. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, even when we had the Hillbilly Thomas mm-hmm. in town and we wanted to serve beer, we had to figure out who are we going to buy our beer from. And Forest City Brewing, Brewing is just north of the parish. We thought, let's support local businesses in that way. So a lot of, I think, the answer to this question is thinking through, forming your conscience, and making sure that you're making the best and most prudent decisions that you possibly can, knowing that it is a fallen world and an imperfect world. So a lot of times it's maybe not the best, but the best possible. Yeah, right. Know. Like I try to be as sustainable as I can, right? Which is, you know, which is a Catholic you know, doctrine, you know, is that to be environmentally right. prudent, right? And so I looked at like all the different toilet paper companies that are out there and said, well, which one is the most sustainable? So I found a company, okay, this is going to be a little off color, just <laughs> so you know. It's called Who Gives a Crap? Mm. And it literally is because we, we care about the environment, is what they said. And so it's made from bamboo instead of you know, the usual paper products that they are. And they send me, like, this big, giant box. Yeah. And the box, by the way, is even sustainable, which I thought was funny. Hmm. So that was my first thought. I was like, so you just gave me this big, giant box. <laughs> am, I, am I really making <laughs> yeah. a difference here? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, and, and all the products, you know, all the toilet paper is basically sustainable. And they're, and they're moving into um, things like paper towels and things like that now as well. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, part of this question seems to me to also – have us consider the role of a Christian in the world and in secular society. And what I mean by that is, I'm thinking back to when I was in college, and in 1997, that was a great time for music, and the Lilith Mm. Fair was touring at the time. So that was like Sarah McLachlan, Sheryl Crow, Jewel, the Indigo Girls. I saw Patty Griffin as an opening act there, and she's one of my favorite singer-songwriters of all time. Mm. And there are a bunch of acts. But Lilith is the one who refused God and was like the anti-Eve and the pre-fall in the Old Testament. And I, I had to consider like, okay, am I, what am I supporting when I'm going to this show? And what kind of things can I um, be involved in as a Catholic in good conscience? Um, and so part of it, I thought was, well, if I'm going to be there and I'm at that time as a seminarian, I'll, I can be salt, light, and leaven in an environment where maybe people are not um, wouldn't expect to see a seminarian or a priest or a, a Catholic, you know, who takes his faith seriously. So, yeah, sometimes these are prudential decisions that one makes. And even in terms of, you know, we've had our conversation about, do you support the Browns now that mm. they have Deshaun Watson on? So how, how do you work through these big questions um, and form your conscience well so that you are acting prudently, virtuously, and giving good example and not scandal to others, you know? So Yeah. I mean, and some of these companies make great products, so that's a, that's a fruit of creative spirit that, that God gave them. But um, by participating, how do you participate, and can you, can you show Christ in that way by, by being there instead of, you know, one person sitting out? Is that statement, is that really making a statement either? Right. And there's the distinction between like formal cooperation. I am buying into this philosophy or this doctrine and I'm, I'm all in or remote, like far away material cooperation. So there's some cooperation there, but it's not. And this is why philosophy is really good because it helps us make those important distinctions where one can be involved in 
remote material cooperation, but not formal cooperation with an evil or um, something that is anti-Catholic, right? Yeah, I, I know. I think for me too. I think one of the things is, you know, it's one thing to to talk about this all the time, right? You know, and to really think about doing it. But you know, ha- how am I going to like keep this in the back of my mind all the time? Is what is what I try to do. And so, like, I had students go down to El Salvador. And my parish went to Nicaragua when I was in New York um, many times. I went about four times to Nicaragua. And that's where you really see the effects of these things. And you see people who are, are basically small farmers. And they say, well, yeah, if you, know, if you buy from us directly, that's a lot better for us. Than, and I can feed my family. If you go through this company and you only go through this company, you're going to take they're going to take more than half of what I'm I'm doing. You know, mm-hmm. um, in El Salvador, I think the big products were beans and coffee for the most okay. part. Um, and so I brought a little gift for both of you, by the way. Oh. Um, so Equal Exchange is a very good um, coffee place. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. What? Should I chuck She's it? She's athletic. She can catch <laughs> can it. Catch. There you go. <laughs> I had to throw it over a microphone to get it to Maria. <laughs> um, this little bag. Um, so French vanilla for both right. of you. Thank you. Nice. I don't drink a lot of coffee, but when I do when I do have it, Maria's like, oh, my God, how do you survive? <laughs> mm. um, I also don't get up at 3 in the morning like you do, Maria. Um, but, yeah, but when I do, I usually purchase that, and that was a brand I actually liked um, that was fair trade. Um, but I remember I, I went to a place called El Sitio in, in El Salvador and lived with a family for a few days who had a small farm, and they and they grew coffee and beans. And um, the guy who was on the farm, like, really informed me about all this stuff and said, you know, he said, yeah, you know, I said, it's, it's really hard for us to make a living with these companies that just come in and they take everything. And he said... It's it's so much better for us to get you know so we we'll get a fair price um, from these other companies that yeah. are keeping us in mind. Yeah, and along the food food lines, you see like like we we've tried to do it. We couldn't do it this summer, but grow our own gardens, like teaching yeah. our kids how to use how to use the earth and grow like good clean food. Mm-hmm. Um, so even going to like local farmers markets, I know in Strongsville they'll have like a farmers market day where people come and bring mm-hmm. like supporting those those types of things and. That way, you know, like you're also you're helping your local community and the people directly, and seeing like their dignity right. and upholding mm-hmm. their dignity. It's it's a great lesson if you get into gardening. I shouldn't say a lesson. It gives you a, a nice lens on the scriptures because so much of what's written in scriptures uh, is from an agrarian community, and so Jesus's examples of seeds and planting and growing and being patient and weeds and wheat. When you're working a garden, you're seeing all that. And then you can teach children the same thing and to plant things from seeds. I have a really nice marigold garden this year that I planted from seed for the first time. I dried out marigolds uh, last summer. And to compost, I think, is a great thing, too, whether it's tea bags, coffee grinds, food rinds, and let that decompose over the wintertime and then use that to... um, to be your new soil and yeah. compost to grow things is it's cool. Um, talk about sustainability. Yeah. And this has been going on forever. You know, right. I mean, this is, this is what people do. So it's nice to get your hands involved in the earth. It's a, it's a natural, no pun or pun intended organic way of doing <laughs> things. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. yeah and it's true. not to say like, the internet or buying things online is, is bad. It can make really good connections. Uh, just recently I purchased some, some pictures, some handmade, pictures online. I found them through Etsy. Mm-hmm. This woman lives in Ohio. I had no idea she existed, but now if I ever need anything, I can go to her her directly. So it does help us make connections and be more mm-hmm. connected, I guess, yeah, right. <laughs> know each mm-hmm. other. I, I know when I was, in, again, I'll go back to El Salvador. Um, there's a company in El Salvador called League, and they, they make all kinds of uh, t-shirts for with uh, school logos on it. So a lot of the Catholic schools in the United States, they'll get all of their T-shirt wear, everything else from League, and it's a, and it's a uh, fair trade clothing line that comes in. So they were like, well, we're not going to give our money to Under Armour or whoever. You know, we'd, we'd rather give our money to these places, you know. And um, it was a really good product. I have yeah. to say, you know, like the t-shirts were really they, they weren't they didn't fall apart. They were, mm-hmm. you know, they were really good quality and everything else. And it was fun to go to the plant and actually watch it being made and watch all the people who were working there. I couldn't get over how many people were employed there. I yeah. mean, it was a full on 
plant, you know, where, where everybody's like walking around. And the folk, you could tell the folks really needed the work. You know, they were yeah. like, yeah, if it wasn't for this place, I, I don't know what I would have done. And so that's sort of like a both and there, you know, supporting a group of people who, you know, are in a pretty poor country, right? You know, and, um, and you know, the place is made from the ground up there. And, uh, and they looked at it and said, yeah, how can we be more sustainable as a people, you know, yeah. and, and, and go this way. So it's a great place. Yeah. It's cool. What else? Anything else on this? We've done a pretty good job with this so far. Well, I guess one final thought is when going to stores or purchasing things, I think there's something to be said when the businesses are interested in their customers. So whether it's the uh, specialist for marriage and family or the director of youth ministry for the diocese of Cleveland or the vicar for evangelization who comes into your shop in his Roman collar. Not that I'm always in it, but I'm in it often. I was even thinking when I went down to um, some of the local stores that sell the Cleveland gear, I bought uh, some welcoming gifts for the Hillbilly Thomas in town. And there it is. Like you, you have to interact with the proprietor mm -hmm. and what are you doing here and what do you do? And so some of that interaction can be good, especially if from time to time there may be some ideological disagreements on things, but you're coming together as human beings and getting to know each other, as uh, Pope Francis would say, building that culture of encounter. So not being afraid to go to the peripheries. And I mean, I'm not saying go to... Um, vehemently evil stores like <laughs> Adult Mart or something. I'm talking about um, stores that may have some, you know, questionable uh, ideologies that they're that they're supporting, but being able to go in and talk to people and stand on their ground and, and you know, be Christ there. You and I talk cool. about this all the time. We say, you know, a culture of encounter is better than a culture of silence, you mm -hmm. know? Like, right. So like, here's a good example. So um, the dining hall... At Canisius, where I worked, um, there were a bunch of students who said they wanted more sustainable food options. And they said, they, you know, a couple of students who were vegan or vegetarian, some folks had. And there was a lot of pushback at times from things like, well, you know, no one's really going to buy this stuff. No one, you know, we can, we can make a whole vegan station. No one's really going to buy this stuff. But one of the executive chefs really took it to heart and said, no, I want to meet with people. And so mm -hmm. she met with this group of students and she started this new station called Pitchforks. That was a. It was basically a vegan station. Mm -hmm. It was delicious, by the way. Mm -hmm. I used to eat there like you know, three times a week, and she took this really seriously. Not only did the station win awards from all these food organizations, but like the students really responded, and people who never would have ordered food from there started going, and they were like, "Wow, this is really good." It really kind of changed the culture in a big way. That's but it was because of encounter. It mm -hmm. was because you know she said. No, look, they've got a beef. Let me let me mm -hmm. listen to them for a little while, and I think there's something we can do here. You know, Lindsay Fullerman, yeah. who you know from Fit for Faith, uh, does some work at our seminary. And early on, she was meeting with students, and then she asked to meet with the kitchen staff, and then helped make sure that at every meal there would be a healthy protein, a healthy fat, and a healthy carb, and that there was more balanced options for the guys because that's how you you learn is by having by being shown. So, yeah, that stuff's really important. Yeah, the the, the the guy athletes were all complaining right away because we, well, one was I said, during Lent, we shouldn't have meat in the cafeteria on Friday. Mm. Right. And they're like, rah, rah, we need our protein. Get your lentils. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I was like um, Jen was the executive chef, and I said, uh, Chef Jen, and she was like, here are all your protein options for the day. And she showed them all these things that were meatless, and they're like, all right, <laughs> I guess we're shutting up now. You know, and I said, yeah, you're, you're just saying that you just don't think you're going to like that. That's why you don't want to have it. Why don't you try something, and then you can say, I don't really like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what happened. You know, they tried it, and they're like, okay, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> you know? I was like, well, you know. It's like when you're a little kid, right, you know, and your parents are like, no, try it first, yeah. you know, before you say you don't like it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, this has all been good. This has been fun today. Um, so we'll, we'll put a bunch of different links in the show notes for um, some sustainable options for different things, um, you know, whether it's Equal Exchange or your League or one of these other places. Um, and uh, we will also go to a church today. So Cosmos and Damien in Twinsburg is your classmate, right? Yeah, Father Mike Stahl is the pastor there. Interestingly, the city is named... Well, it's named Twinsburg, and the parish was put there because Cosmos and Damien are twins, which is oh. pretty creative of whatever bishop did that. Um, it's a 
it's a big old church that I think Father Friedel built and then he retired and um, it's it still could use some finishing on the walls, but Father Stala just redid the sanctuary. It's big. It's it uh, yeah, it's nice. Um, and they used to have a school. They don't have a school anymore. But in terms of evangelization, there's a lot going on down there. Yeah. There's some sort of Eucharistic display of miracles that's going to be happening in Correct. October, I think. Yeah, that's that's coming around. So for the Eucharistic revival, our, our little team that's working on this, we've said, okay, how can we get this in front of as many mm-hmm. people as possible? So that's going to do the traveling road show, I think, as well. Yeah, and speaking of Stala, he's bilingual. He was yeah. down in Salvador for seven years as a pastor. Yeah, yeah. very gifted young Young man. Yeah, he's great. He did our deacon retreat last January, which mm-hmm. was really a lot of fun. He was a really good preacher and really gave us a lot to think about, so it was great. So that's Father Michael Stawa at Cosmos and Damien in Twinsburg, Ohio. Our gospel for this weekend uh, is a whole bunch of different things. It's the lost co- parable of the lost coin, the parable of the good shepherd, and the parable of the prodigal son, all in one. Um, do you have a favorite of those three? No. Well, as you were saying them, I guess I was just thinking about how Christianity ultimately is not about us searching for God, but God searching for us. And yeah. I, I always think that's nice um, and and uh, helpful and calming for the heart. Yeah. Like God's, God's doing most of the work here. Yeah, exactly. How about you, Maria? My, I don't know. My favorite is always the prodigal son, and I use it a lot uh, as I teach faith formation with the young kids. Yeah, same with me. I always say we should pay attention to the older brother mm-hmm. and the prodigal son because the older brother is often us, mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> the one who won't go in because he's holding a grudge. Yep. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's going to be uh, this Sunday. Um, hey, we have been really tearing up the airwaves here. We've... Um, Got about you know somewhere between 150 people. We get about we get about 200 downloads a week. They're not all the most recent episode. Mm-hmm. So usually, like right away, 150 people will listen to the episode that we put out, and then over the next couple of weeks, people will catch up. You know, so we've got about you know somewhere between 250 and 300 regular listeners now, which that's is really great. which is really good for you know a podcast that's barely 40 episodes long. That's cool at this point. So thanks for your listening. If you have a question of faith, you can send that to me. It's uh, m hayes at dioceseofcleveland.org. You could send me a little you know a little voice memo if you want to, and we'll use your voice on the air if you want. And uh, we'll, we will be happy to take your questions, and uh, we'll have more of your questions and a whole lot more next time on Question of Faith. Mm-hmm.